Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. Now this is part three of the series that's turning into a little bit of a, a tutorial really for a case study in building um, a work order quality review system essentially in Power BI that leverages the capabilities of the OpenAI large language model. So check videos one and two if you've not watched them and that will give you a little bit of context as to what's happening here. So basically at the end of the last video we had set up um, a process that allows us to go and assess the, the work orders and make sure that we only assess the work orders once and that we only use obviously it costs us money to assess the work orders not very much but it costs us money so we don't want to, to duplicate assessments and, and have to deal with that so that was all done in the second work order um, second video the first one was where I set everything up um, and set up the actual um, API into the OpenAI um, language model so go and check them out if you're just watching this one on its own so Next, we're going to go and we need to do something with information. Okay, so obviously it's fine getting that um, response back. And the next part here is to create, um, or was going to be to create the the actual coaching feedback to the individuals that have had work orders that have been assessed. Now, one of the things that we've got to be very, very aware of here is the ethics behind this. And we do need to make sure that your organization and the people um, are comfortable with every work order they create being critiqued by an AI system. And I think that's something that we're going to probably have to deal with pretty much um, more and more in the next couple of years. But um, that's something you would need to address here. Okay, so there is a very, very strong change management element of this. Now, that also means that there's a couple of things we need to, to address. First of all, we need to make sure that the information that we provide so this coaching tips here that's provided if they are applied to the text it does actually then make the assessment better okay so for example just to talk you through that this text here is all been made up okay it's all been fabricated um but this text here fan not spinning observe fan blade stuck action is to go and are you tried spinning notes old fun okay so it's pretty poor in terms of um how much information is in there and so it was rated as poor okay and part of these coaching tips here were improvements okay so part of it part of the the actual prompt that i sent to OpenAI was to ask for a general assessment it was to ask for some coaching tips and it was to add and these are the coaching tips here and it was to finish with an actual rating now what i did find so that's fine and we'll cover that in a minute because if you apply these updates we want to make sure that the next time the text gets assessed, the rating is either a two or ideally a three, okay? So that needs to be the case because what we don't want is for somebody to say, right, great, we'll give you some coaching tips. I've applied it to the text and then it gets rated again and it becomes a one, okay? So we need to be crystal clear on what a one, a two and a three is. Now, the other thing that's happened here is that we can see that there's three work orders here and this scores 0.3. So something's not right here. Um, we can see that at the very bottom, this rating is good, okay? And it's been given a three. Um, and this rating here has been rated a two acceptable. So what that means is that when I go and actually try and extract this number two here, using this code here, which is essentially to go and actually get the last character in the response, it finds that this is a, a bracket. It doesn't find that. Um, and we probably could create some some information some docs to go and actually find the rating or, or with with the, with the semicolon and then the the number two. But I just want to keep it keep life simple and make sure that the very last thing that's entered in here is the actual rating on its own. So we need to just update the prompt for that as well. Right. So let's go in and we'll start looking at our prompt and how we can improve it. Okay, so we're back in the, the the flow and I've opened up this compose statement and we can see this is the, the user prompt here and I can see what the issue is. So we've got this section here that says um, the third section is rating. Add a rating description here. Poor, okay, good. Add the rating number here. And I've actually enclosed it in brackets. Okay, so I've just put a little bit more of an explicit statement there that says... Add the rating 
number here, what I'll do is actually stick it in your line, add the rating number here, the rating needs to be a 1 or a 2 or a 3 and needs to be the very last character in the response. And then we've got the review text, the, the text review is here, so that's fine. That should hopefully work. So we've got to be very, very particular sometimes on what the response or what the prompt is, because sometimes it can actually give you can give you what you're asking it for, but not what you actually thought you were going to get back. So let's save and apply that. We'll just give it a test. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'll choose work order number one again, and then I'm going to send it off. Now what I've got here is I've actually opened up in a, in a different window. I've opened up the flow just directly in Power Automate. So make.powerautomate.com and it just lets you see it without having to go in through the edit button um, every single time. And it's useful just to be able to see what's going on. So here we go, we can see there's something wrong here and then we can go in and hopefully this one here, it's here. There we go, the content here. And we see it's number two. Okay, so that looks like it's working for that one. I need to test it another couple of times just to make sure that it is, but I'm pretty confident that now it's going to basically put this at the very end because we had inadvertently told it to put it in brackets and we didn't want it we didn't want it in brackets, we want it just to be a standalone number. Okay, so that's the first update to the prompt. Okay, so we're back in our flow here and this is the, the prompt that we've we've been working on so far. So it's got these changes we just made here. Um and I've done a bit of testing. Okay, so the testing that I did was to make sure that the the coaching feedback that's provided, when it's applied to the defect text and then it's re-reviewed, then it actually improves the rating. Now let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got a prompt here, and that's a prompt of um I've just shown you in the screen, and we combine the prompt is a, kind of like a combination of the prompt and also the defect report text. So that's the information that we send across to the OpenAI model. And the OpenAI model basically takes that prompt, applies the text to it and reviews it. Okay, large language model uses it, the, basically does its thing and then generates the response. Okay, now the response that we've got here, response Gen Zero, and that is going to include the ratings and also the coaching tips. Okay, so it was a rating number one and it's got up to three specific coaching tips on how to improve the quality of the, the defect text. So then what I did is I went and I actually took that response and I combined it with the defect reporting text and I created a new prompt, but that's not too really important. Now, essentially, I asked it to go and apply the coaching tips um, assume the role of a um, of a technician and apply the coaching tech tips that were generated here to the text, the original text, and then generate a new defect report text. Okay? And then what I've done is I've taken that new defect report text along with the prompt and I've asked it to review that and rate it again. Okay? And then it'll create a, another response that's going to have some additional coaching tips and it's going to have a rating. Now what I want, what I was looking for here was this rating here, once I've applied the coaching tips that was originally provided as part of the um, first response, that when it went and rated it, it was higher and it was, it was a two. Okay. However, when I did it again and again and again, it kept on creating a rating of a two. Now it never did this all the time, but it was inconsistent. And I really didn't want that to be a possibility because there's going to be nothing worse if you've got this tool that's going to actually assess and, and, and provide you with some coaching tips. If you're a technician and you're going to apply those tips, broadly speaking, and improve the quality of your text the next time or to the, or to the same one, and you get an assessment again by the, the AI system, open the eye and it comes back and says a two is not good enough and here's some additional stuff and you keep on doing that it's going to be a little bit frustrating and and probably useless actually because we're never going to get anything and it's and it's going to get to the point where there's going to be marginal increases but actually there is going to be a limit to the quality of the text that we want because we don't want to don't, we really don't want a technician to spend too much time inputting a really, really detailed piece of text if it's for a garage door, for example, with this one here. We've got to be quite pragmatic about it. Now, if it's a multi million pound gas compression or a, a turbine or some sort of massive pump, then yeah, you might want to 
make sure that the text is, is really detailed. And that takes us to the next section. And that is where we're going to actually use an approach called few short prompt training. And we're going to give it some examples of what a good text looks like and what a bad text looks like and help to train it on the expectations for our particular requirements. Okay, so I'm going to use ChatGPT and I'm going to talk you through how I've actually used it to help me improve the prompt. So the first thing I've done is I've actually gone in here and I've created examples of poor, acceptable and excellent work order defect reporting text. So here's a couple of examples of what poor looks like. Here's some acceptable ones and here are some that we've classified as being excellent. Okay, now these were actually generated by when I generated the, the, the data set. Now I will leave a downloadable data set um, in the link below. But what this is, is basically text that was actually generated by ChatGPT originally anyway. And it was text that it had come up with as being excellent, acceptable and poor. But that's by the by, you can actually use your own examples here from your own organization and you've got your own expectations. And that's gonna be the best way to do this. So a couple of examples of poor, a couple of examples of acceptable and a couple of examples of excellent text. So the first thing we're going to do is, can you explain the characteristics of poor, acceptable and excellent defect reports? So I'm asking it to go and actually draw out the essence of what each type would be. So here we can see poor um, d defect report, so vagueness, lack of detail, limited diagnostic information, no long-term solution analysis, lack of technical specification, etc, etc. So it's got that information there right down to the what excellent looks like. So we've now confirmed the kind of characteristics of what each type would look like. And that's much more specific than just saying use best practice. Then I have gone and here they've put in a text, uh, a prompt here. Below is a prompt I currently use. It works well, but could be more specific about the classification of poor, acceptable and excellent. And I've copied the prompt in here. Okay. More or less. I've kind of changed this last little bit here, but that's um, that's fine. So that's the prompt we've done. And then I've asked it, can you please update the original prompt, keeping the original text, but add in few short example training of defect reporting text from the examples above, and also the characteristics of poor, acceptable, and excellent from the examples above. Now, it's the large language model is going to pull this characteristics out anyway, but I think it's just to, to help us um, be explicit about what the characteristics are, I've asked it to include those. So here's a response here, and it's basically given as a prompt. Okay, so current prompt updated with few short examples and characteristics. So then this is the new prompt here. Your task is to review the quality of this work order defect reporting, provide the analysis. It's got this characteristics here. Provide three short, um, but positive, three short but positive points of feedback. Suggest up to three actions to take improvement in the text. And after the review and the data, provide a rating of the quality of the entry. And there's a scale here. Um, and then it's got the output format here. So it's kind of more or less got exactly what we've got. I'm looking for this to make sure that I'm not going to change this bit here, which is fine. The last character will be the rating. And here's the actual few short example for training. Okay, so poor, acceptable, excellent. In fact, it's actually only used one of each. It doesn't, need, it doesn't feel like it needs two examples of each, which is great. The data you need to review is here, and then this is where we'd add the data. Right, so we've got a new prompt. So let's go and actually test this prompt. So what I've done here is I've gone in and I've asked that your task is to review the quality of the work order defect reporting text. Okay, so I've used this prompt. And at the bottom here, this is the text that I've asked it to review. Okay, so this is the, the generation one or the, or the Gen Zero text that we're going to use. And then it's got the response. So here's the response here, what went well, and it's got some coaching tips and it's got the rating and that rating is the last character, which is great. And it's a rating of one. Okay, so it's a poor text, which I would expect, so that's good. Okay, so the next I've done is I've taken the prompt again and I just want to check it with some text that is actually a different rating. Okay, we've done it with a zero and a one and it came back with a one, which I would expect. So we've got another one here and this came back as a two, so it's good. And then I fed it again, I've fed it uh, this one here, which has been rated as a three. And we can see it's a three. Okay, so I'm just testing it to make sure that something that looks like a one has been rated as a one, something that looks like a two has been rated as a two, and something that looks like a three has been rated as a three. So that's all good. 
The next thing we're going to do is now I'd like you to act as a maintenance technician. Okay, so this is where we're going to simulate applying the coaching tips to something that's been um, rated as a, a, as, a zero, as a one. And we're going to see if it can apply that to the text, apply the coaching tips to the text, re-rate it, and hopefully it's a two or even a three with that coaching tips. So now I'd like you to act as a maintenance technician. I'd like you to create a new version of the poor quality defect reporting text copied below and apply the coaching tips suggested during the review. Now, I'd probably actually miss this out next time and, and I wouldn't tell it that it's a poor quality defect reporting text. I'd just tell it it's, it's defect reporting tips. Explain what you've done to update the text and, that, and then below that, print the new def defect reporting text V2. Okay. So a defect reporting text V1. So this is was the original text here. Here's the coaching tips that I'd actually taken from the response above. And then it has created a response. Okay, so what it's done is it's told, it's explained what it's done. So I've included more specific details about the condition of the door. Um, instead of just mentioning oil in the door, I've elaborated on the process, including examining the door alignment and checking for obstructions that might be causing an issue. Now these are pretty, Ben, I wouldn't say benign, but these are simple examples here, but you can imagine this scaling up to more significant bits of equipment in a maintenance setting. And then this is the V2 reporting text. Okay, so door won't slide smoothly. The door is difficult to move on its track. So you can see it's much more detailed than it was before. We've got some notes here, clean the alignment adjustment to improve the door's movements, but considering the way that the role is. So, okay, and then it's got some model numbers here, which is a, a characteristic of a bit more of a detailed text. And it's just made these up. Then I've taken this text here, which we'll call the version two text, and I've used the prompt and I've fed it in here. Okay, so I'm now feeding the prompt, I'm feeding the defect text that has the coaching tips from the first review applied to it back into the actual text again, or back into the prompt again, sorry. And we can see that it has been given a rating of a three. Okay, so it seems to be working. Okay, and that's exactly what I wanted. A two or a three would have been fine. If it was a two, I would have then iterated again and hopefully it would have been a three, but if it's jumped straight to three, that's even better. Okay, so I'm back in here and in my flow here, and I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna take that new prompt and I'm gonna paste it in here. Okay, now I'll just get rid of these, tidy up this a little bit. So we don't need this bit here. And we don't need necessarily this at the top here. Okay, now I'm going to save this and I'm going to save and apply and I'm going to go and test this. So let's go back to our report. Okay, so I'm going to go and actually assign a few for Alex Morgan. So we're going to take one, two, three, we'll just take these ones here just at the start of the start of the month there. And then we're going to go and send these for review. Okay, so I've refreshed this report and we've got all of the feedback here for each one of the work orders that Alex Morgan has created. And they have got an average score of 1.7. Okay, so this is where we can now start to look at creating a report in Power BI that's going to have some some good quality information that we can actually use as um, for, for tracking progress and also for providing some feedback to the person that's raised these. So that's it for this one. Just a little bit of prompt engineering to make sure we've got a really robust prompt and that the information that is generated by the prompt is actually going to be used to improve the, um, the, the, the quality of the text. So in the next video, we're going to actually go and build out this dashboard and make it much more user friendly and hopefully a little bit better looking than it is just now. So I'll talk to you in the next video.